So in today's video, I wanna talk about photo books and how some of the photo books that you probably have at home on your shelf or maybe even in your Amazon shopping cart can help you become a better photographer. Let's get into it. So most of us look at photo books to appreciate a specific body of work by some of our favorite artists. But an area that I think often gets overlooked is how great they are for new photographers and old photographers to use as a guide for your own photos. I have a few videos out there about drawing inspiration. They're called taking inspiration, in fact. That inspiration can directly affect your own work through ideas, philosophy, even down to, to lighting and composition. But I wanna pinpoint portraiture in particular by some of my favorite artists. So I picked out two photo books in particular that I wanna talk about, Mitch Epstein's Sunshine Hotel and Gregory Crutzen's Evening Side. Um, they both do portraiture slightly differently. This book is a retrospective. We're gonna get into the details about it. Um, but I wanna look at how they do portraiture differently and how they can impact your own photography. So let's get into Sunshine Hotel. So this book was published uh, by PPP in Steidl, uh, curated by Andrew Roth. Um, and this is a retrospective of Mitch Epstein's work from 1969 to 2018. So it spans a, a huge catalog, nearly a half a century of Mitch Epstein's work. Not particularly portrait work. It's kind of runs the gamut on all these things. But there are some images in here that I really, really want to talk about. And uh, one in particular, first and foremost, is this woman right here. Hello. Odell is in the hospital, intensive care. What uh, upset over the selling? Is she upset over selling out? They're wanting to put, I've heard a loading dock right here on my property for coal. If you look over on the riverbank, and you see a little dried up woman standing over there, white palms and white teeth, that'll be me. I'll be black with all this coal dust on me. And this is my weapon. I'm pretty good shot with a rifle. If somebody starts through that door, I'll shoot them. I don't want to kill them. And I'd hate for them to get through the door and get blood on my floor, but I guess that'd be better than being, can't be my blood. <laughs> so. So this is Beulah Boots Hearn. To give this image a little bit of backstory, Beulah and her neighbors were offered payment by the encroaching arms of the American Electric Power Company to bulldoze the land and build a coal burning power plant to better suit the needs of the bustling city of Columbus. Many of the residents on that parcel of land took the deal, but Beulah stayed and made national news, becoming a symbol of American integrity. This image taken by Mitch shows so much, the kindness in Beulah's eyes, that faint smile, all while a gun gently rests on the arm of her beige recliner. Now I think portraiture is best when you can pair it with other images, right? To build the story. I think story is the most important aspect of photography outside of like, the typical composition, lighting, all those types of things. This is another image in the project. This image is from Beulah's house. Um, she has this little CRTV or CC, closed circuit television, CCRTV, CCTV, whatever. Um, but she has it with a little camera that's pointing out, sort of watching like I said, the encroaching arms of this coal burning power plant um, while they're also simultaneously watching her. And I find that that sort of um, that juxtaposition really fascinating when it comes to photography. And this is just another layer of the story that can be added um, when you pair it with that photo, that portrait of Beulah being the centerpiece of the project. And then you can go around and try to find some of the ancillary stuff, some of the, you know, sort of B-roll in a sense that sort of helps develop the story. I think that goes a long way 
and, and making uh, a really good cohesive project. Also, I don't know what it was about like the early 90s and the 2000s, early 2000s. I had this exact same setup at home. We had a giant Zenith TV that was never used, but on top of it was a bigger, nicer TV or a newer TV. Um, why did our parents do that? I don't, I have no idea. That was such a common thing. All of my friends had that too. I don't, I don't get it. So we talked about that image of Beulah, then we showed the image of Beulah's home with the, the little camera pointing out. This is basically an aftermath or what could be looked at as a forward shot. This is a house of one of her neighbors that took the buyout and this is the outcome. Written crudely on the, on the roof of this house, spray painted, gone. And that's just to let the crew know who's gonna bulldoze that this is one of the houses that needs to get taken out. And she built a life with her husband and they bought this house. They wanted to live there forever. Unfortunately, her husband did pass away. Um, and Beulah obviously has passed since 2018 or 2008, sorry. Um, but this is what she feared. Seeing her hopes and her dreams and her memories crudely marked with a gone symbol on the top and then eventually in the coming days completely wiped out bulldozed and just a plot of land now where one of these smokestacks is going to be built or specifically a loading dock is what she says and there's a bullet in it see right there so i don't have to cock it there's a bullet right there i will not sell out unless they force me and of course they'll have to come up with my price. My price is one million dollars. Now there's really three reasons that I'm not selling out. One is I'm not happy with the way they treated me. I think they treated me wrong. I have been here an old homesteader longer than anyone. Another is I'm sentimental. Another is I'm too old to move. It would be hard for me to move. So these are the sort of things that you think about with portrait photography, or at least I do. I try to think of not only the person and the interesting details that the person uh, maybe has as a feature or their prominence or their, their presence. Those are all things that you think about when it comes to standard portrait photography, but it's these images that really help build the story. And I think that's paramount when it comes to portrait photography. So that right there is just a snippet, just a little bit of Mitch Epstein's Sunshine Hotel. I absolutely adore that book. It's a huge source of inspiration for me. Another book I want to talk about is this one right here, Gregory Crudson's Evening Side. Side is a really, really interesting book. It just came out late 2023, and it compiles four different bodies of work by Gregory Crutzen. It includes Fireflies from 1996, Cathedral of Pines from 2012 to 2014, An Eclipse of Moss from 2018 to 2019, and then Evening Side from 2021 to 2022. And um, if you want to take a deep dive into the psychology of an artist, this is the book for you. You'll go through this book you'll start to see images, but what you also see, this is fireflies here that I'm skipping through, uh, Cathedral of Pines now, but what you see here is a lot of text. There's images on the sides here, small images, 
And it gives you an idea of exactly how Gregory Crutzen thinks and what he sees with his images and how he wants images to be portrayed. Gregory Crutzen is an incredible artist and he thinks very deeply about his images. Um, and if you go through this book, you can see why he positions people in certain ways, why he decides to photograph certain things. Um, and he goes into every little detail, even commemorating um, past art, Renaissance art, in fact, in this image, uh, and a lot of historical religious art to, um, to sort of draw inspiration for his own image making. But I want to jump to evening side, which he does a whole lot of talking about here. And it's really, really incredible. Like I said, if you have the chance, definitely pick it up. This is the first image from evening side. The thing that I want to talk about with Evening Side is this is the first project since Fireflies that Gregory Crutzen decided to work within black and white. And this is all digital. I believe it was with some um, Hasselblad digital medium format camera. I'm not super in tune with that kind of stuff. But uh, this was all digital and all black and white. So it's a really kind of vast change from the last nearly 20 years of his career photographing mostly in color to transitioning to black and white for his latest project and I think it suits this subject matter very very well. If you don't know Gregory Crutzen highly manipulates his scene he goes over every little detail he has a huge crew of people that help uh, sort of build the the story and and build the sets and build the lighting and he is he's not just one guy sitting out there with a camera he scouts locations for years, and he comes up with stories for years. He's, he's a lot like uh, Stephen King, coming up with these incredible science fiction novels um, and then eventually putting them onto, uh, well, in this case, uh, digital. But most of the time, prior to this, prior to Evening Side, it was mostly on film. So um, really, really interesting and compelling. And when you go through these images, it's a lot to take in. I got to be honest. Every time, every Crutzen book I own, I own a couple – it takes me a long time. It takes me several sort of sessions to sit down and go through them to even try to figure out what's going on, what he's trying to say. And a lot of what Crudson does has a lot to do with loneliness. And I feel like this is sort of one of those things uh, that's done really, really well in this. There's a sense of isolation uh, and disparity throughout Evening Side that I absolutely adore. But to bring it all back around to portrait photography, this is a really interesting concept in portrait photography. It's very, very pulled back. Uh, it's fairly expansive. And sometimes the person in the image is maybe a couple of inches big, uh, but they're very, very small. They almost look like sort of accent pieces to the image, but they are the focal point. And these are, in my opinion, portraits because they are depicting true life and they are the main subject. So I don't know if Crutzen would directly classify these as portrait photography. I don't think he would. Um, I think he just sort of looks at photography as a very sort of like all encompassing term. Um, but because the main subject is a person, I like to think of these as extremely complex portraits. just singular people in these images there are other characters here and sometimes they're faceless like in this one you got this woman presumably a bartender or a waitress at this small bar and you have this guy over here with his back turned just playing as a patron and I find that really interesting I, I love the idea that you have this main subject in this woman here looking out longingly for maybe brighter pastures and then you have this person looking inward um, and he's faceless he's nameless he's essentially an entity um, and he's looking 
not necessarily into the future. He's looking into the past. So there's aspects of portrait photography that really run very, very deep. And uh, I love the way Crutzen portrays portraits of people because it's not just a singular person. It's an entire environment. And that's sort of how I look at portrait photography. I try to shoot wider. I try to step back a little bit and try to not only focus on the person, but allow the scene around them to try to build that story. And much like Mitch Epstein, by taking a singular portrait, a very tight portrait of a person, and then adding photographs around them to help build that story, Crutzen does it all in one photo. So they're very different styles, but they both get the same point across, and I think that's really important to understand. Now, we obviously have two books here, and I very much enjoy both of them. They're two books that I look at very often. Emily bought me this for Christmas. I bought this at the start of the summer, uh, Mitch Epstein's Sunshine Hotel. And I really enjoy going through both of them. And whenever I feel sort of down and out and not very confident in my own photo making, I often look back to these two books I look to a lot of Robert Adams books that I own, Justine Kurland, Barbara Bosworth. There are some of the artists that really inspire me. Joel Sternfeld, obviously, too. Um, there are people that really kind of have a good grasp on what they're doing. And at the end of the day, I think a lot of people kind of forget that side of photo books. They look at photo books as just a way to admire an artist. And I certainly do. But... There's a whole other side of photo books that's sort of untapped sometimes. And for those of you who maybe feel like you're too old to go back to school, or you don't have the financial backing to go back to school and, and learn photography or go to a design school or whatever, or you don't have the freedom and time to do a residency, often, those are often free, um, but they consume a lot, a lot of time. If, if you're like me, I have a nine to five job and I don't have the ability to take two, three months off. Um, but if you're in those positions where you don't have the financial freedom or the actual freedom to go and do a residency, these books can be used as teachers. That's how I look at them sometimes. And when I'm stuck and I'm lost, I go back and I look at some of my favorite artists and I just try to learn. That's, I think, one of my favorite things about photo books is that any book that you pick up, even if it's from a lesser known artist or somebody who just published their first book or self-published a book or just made a zine or you just bought a print from somebody, these artists are are not only inspiring and and what they're doing is is remarkable because it's not easy to make a book, it's not easy to make a zine, it's not easy to make prints. Um, you can also look at them as a source of inspiration to make your best work. These are your teachers. Go to your local library, buy books online, go support the artist directly, and learn as much as you possibly can. If you're going to take anything away from that, this video, I hope that that's what it is. But uh, I'll see you guys all in the next one. Oh, wait. Sorry. By the way, if you like the music in this video, I made it. That's right. Your boy is a music maker, too. Uh, you guys can go check out my music on Bandcamp and uh, support another artist if you feel so inclined. But uh, yeah, okay. And Patreon too. You can go to Patreon. All right, that's it. Bye. my timing down.
haven't played this thing in so long. <laughs> <laughs>